Let's continue with our discussion about junk instruments, poorly made, uh, cheaply made instruments. I've got parts one and two on a slide trombone. For this one, we're going to take this snare drum by Stag. Now, many people would say, well, it's not a bad drum. It's fairly decent. It's got a, looks like a poplar shell even. But we've got some lugs that have broken off internally. And we're gonna see why that is. Now we can say, well, you know, looks good. You know, it's, it's got eight lugs. You know, it's a student line drum, it should be great. But how long will this really last? And why do they break? We're gonna take this part and take a look inside. So I've taken this, I've taken this drum apart and found the problem. Some of these lug casings, the inserts have come out of the lug casing. So it will not allow the drum to be tuned because it's come out. Now let's compare this, what we have here. It looks like a fairly decent lug casing. The casting is made out of a pot metal aluminum of alloy of some sort but this insert is just crimped and it held in place with this clip and as you can see here that is sheared off so the clip doesn't really hold in place any longer that probably comes from tightening it. So you're limited in how you can tune these drums. You can't tighten them up. Maybe you want a nice, tight, snappy sound. Well, you're going to be limited. It'll maybe tune that way for a while, but then it's going to blow out the lug casing. Now let's compare that with a high quality. Here's a standard top of the line Ludwig. And here's the insert for it. It's got a six sided hexagonal shaped retainer. So retainment is done because of the ca uh, casing and how that's cast in there. And then it's retained with this clip like so. Okay. It used to be they would use a, a metal spring and those were great, but they were also <laughs> noisy. So if you tuned your drums low and resonant, they would rattle. So you need to um, pack those with cotton or fabric of some sort so that's going to be held in there really well and you can crank these up pretty tight you can do whatever you want that's going to last forever but this is going to be a problem so i'm going to see if i can remedy this because there are several on here that are pulling out and frankly this is not worth it if you have to replace these lug casings with something more conventional or something of better quality you're going to be um you're going to be spending a lot of money on a drum that's not that great. Okay, and let's look at the shell construction. Looks pretty good, right? It's got smooth grain wood here. It looks like it's probably poplar or some other soft wood. Maybe beech. Not half bad. Not half bad. But let's take it over to a flat surface and see what we've got for trueness of the shell. Now when I say true, I'm talking about is the bearing edge laying flat on a, a flat plane. The bearing edge here is very round over. Not bad. It's um, it's an older style bearing edge, but useful. I think that's okay. And let's check this out. Okay, here's my machined granite slab. Now you can see there's a little bit of a gap there. And here we go, there's a lot of gap there. A lot of gap. I mean, that is way too much. So to make this drum tunable, there it's sitting relatively flat. Here there's an, a gap, and here's the big gap. So to make the drum useful in a wide tuning range, this would have to be plane down using like 80 grit or 40 grit sandpaper, flatten this out, 
and then go and recut the bearing edges. Then you could tune this drum evenly and equally. Likely what's happened with this drum is it was not pitching out properly and so one or two lugs were cranked up more to get the pitch into range because of it not being true and then we get lug casing starting to to blow out. What if you want this drum to be tuned lower? You can't do it. You only can tune this high to to pitch them out and that's it's it's going to be putting undue stress on it. So that's that's one of the issues with a cheaply made poorly built uh, drum. Again, at first glance, you know, people will look at it and go, well, it's a drum, it's a drum, it's a drum, you know, put good heads on it, it'll sound fine. <sighs> Maybe. Not usually, but there's a lot of channels out there saying, you know, a 12-inch drum is a 12-inch drum, you know, and they'll, they'll have, a, like, some Bobinga shell, and then they'll have a mahogany shell, and they'll tune them up, and they'll play them all, doom, 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 they all sound the same, right? Well, it's true to a point. Um, there are a lot of nuances that you can hear in a shell that you're not hearing over a microphone played on a video. Um, but even if there weren't, there's an inspiration factor. And if you can afford like really high-end drums and drum shells, and that inspires you to play a certain way or look for a certain thing, then do it, fine. But here again, we've got things like the snare strainer. It's pretty grindy. I just oiled it, and it works better now. But, I mean, it's not a very well-made strainer. And for 30 or for $27, I can put a Ludwig P85 on there and improve this. But, I mean, you add a $30 strainer, you put different lug casings on here. Well, now you're talking a couple hundred bucks in a drum, you know, before long. So, that is the difference. That's one of the differences between a cheaply made and a well-made drum. So the other issue with budget line instruments and builders of um, instruments that are of questionable build and kind of no name, although I've seen stag drums advertised, the, the parts availability is not real good on budget line instruments. You can't find, you can find a supplier of the instruments themselves, and it's usually someplace stateside that's, you know, unloading huge containers <laughs> that are coming in from China or someplace. So you can't get the parts. And if you could, why would you want to replace it with this when you can see what happens? Now, I'm pretty creative as a repairman and been doing this for 32, 33 years, and there's no way that I can flange this out to make that work better in there. So, what's the alternative? I looked up some lug casings. I can find snare drum casings that would fit the drum, but the whole pattern is not the same. Unless I get a really expensive tube lug. And if I do that, then we're talking like 10 bucks per. I can get replacement lugs for like 5 bucks. But then I'm going to have to redrill all those holes. So I've got 16 holes I need to redrill precisely to get the new lug casings to fit. So I'm basically looking at about a $100 project here um, because of labor and materials. What's the alternative? Another drum? Well, 100 bucks wouldn't go very far for a good quality drum. But, unless you were going to buy a good quality used drum, it may be worth going ahead and doing this. But then you still have the issue with the drum being out of true. So then do I quote a um, bearing edge recut? I can, and I probably will. But I'm just going to shoot the, the school. It's a school-owned instrument. I will shoot them the quote. Um, but likely it'll come back and say, just return it, we've got other drums. And this will sit in a junk pile until I see it again in four more years, um, because it's still in disrepair. That happens a lot. I'll see, <laughs> give a quote on an instrument, and then I won't get a, an approval, and then I'll see it again in a few more years when a new band director comes into that school district and says, hey, let's get this snare drum fixed. So, and then it'll be more down the line. So, um... 
buy what you can afford, yes, but get the best quality you can get so you don't have to pay for it over and over again. They say when you buy a high quality um, instrument or a high quality tool um, that you cry because it was expensive, but you only cry once because every time you use it, you smile. Um, whereas if you buy a low quality instrument, you cry every time you use it. There's some wisdom in that, I think.